today guys. We just recently processed 26 of our 50 meat birds uh, and wanted to chat a little bit about that today. Not necessarily on the butchering side of stuff. There's a lot of articles and videos out there already on that subject on how to butcher, how to skin chickens. Uh, but wanted to chat about some of the things that we do to help improve our efficiency and uh, make the process go a little bit smoother. So cleaning chickens is definitely not a very fun task to do and it can often be pretty time consuming. It's something we do once, maybe twice a year, depending on the year, and it oftentimes takes us a couple birds to get into the swing of things. This year we averaged around six and a half minutes from catching the bird, executing it, and actually getting it clean. However, our time almost tripled and came out to around 18 minutes per bird uh, for that additional remainder of actually getting it into the freezer. Some of that came down to a little bit of a learning curve this year, and also some of that came down to just a little bit of poor planning. So I think planning is pretty critical. It can help save you time, it can help save you money, uh, help save a little frustration down the road, and uh, help you make better decisions. So let's talk a little bit about the basics here, or something that I think is worth taking the time to do, and that's evaluating a couple things. One, your you or your family's lifestyle. Are you guys someone that is always on the go, wants to get in and out of the kitchen, or are you someone that likes to spend a little bit more time, craft a real quality, uh, more delicate type meal, build your memories in the kitchen. Uh, you know, for example, I, I'm someone that wants to get in and out, and I would never imagine, you know, spending my time outside, oh, let's go get dinner made here real quick and going into making a rotisserie chicken. My wife, on the other hand, likes to uh, spend a little bit more time in there and, and build some of those memories and craft that, you know, art piece of, of, a, of a meal here. So uh, taking a little bit of evaluation of that and also figuring out what makes the most sense on how you, you process your meat. Are, are you someone that consumes a whole entire rotisserie chicken? Or are you someone that, you know, likes a lot of, you know, chicken breast or something like that? Uh, like a, skin, a, a skinless breast, um, for us, it's easier for us to go in and actually skin the bird. Uh, the way we did it this year is we skinned the bird, we breasted them out, and then we took a lot of the other meat off and we actually used that to make ground chicken. Ground chicken is something that's so versatile. Uh, you can use it for tacos. I mean, there's just so, so many different uses for it. I mean, exchange ground chicken for ground beef. We do it so often. So that's how we ended up doing a, a lot of the birds. We did end up plucking some of them to do whole entire birds, but most of them were either quartered up or we breasted them out and then used the rest of the meat. That's actually where most of our time was spent this year, sort of our learning curve, was figuring out how to get that meat off that bone. Uh, we watched a handful of videos about getting the bone to pop out. We just couldn't get it to happen, so it was a lot of like finger picking and, and trying to get all that stuff off and then end up then grinding it up. So the grinding part was the very quick part. It was getting all that meat off the bone. So a lot of, a little bit of prep work can go a long way, as well as figuring out portion size. That's another thing I'd really think about is put together a plan on portion size. For example, we did uh, two breasts per package. You know, usually my wife eats one, I eat one. If she does, you know, uh, like drum, like uh, drumsticks or something like that, usually I'll eat two, she'll eat one, and Grace will eat one. So we package four in there. Uh, taking a little bit of time to do that can make a pretty big difference and help hold you accountable because I'll admit, I mean, there's times we've gone out and processed deer and at the end of the day, you're just so worn out, you want to hurry up, you don't want any of this stuff to go to waste, so like, let's just hurry up and get it in the freezer. So you throw a handful of steaks all in one bag, get it all sealed up, thrown in the freezer, and then it comes time to use that, now you're paying the price for that because now you got to use your two steaks for that one meal and you got the other four or five steaks that are sitting in that bag and got to find a way to consume that before, before it goes bad. So I also suggest you take a little time and get all your supplies all in order, uh, making sure your knives are sharpened, make sure you have enough storage bags on hand. Uh, if you're gonna go out and scold your bird, do you know where your thermometer is for that uh, fryer? Or do you have enough propane in that tank to get the job done? We ended up tacking on about an hour and a half to our time because we had to run into town. We didn't have enough propane and we also wanted to get some more of those ground meat bags. So really some pretty basic stuff. Uh, just doing a little bit of planning can make, make a tremendous difference. The last thing I wanted to recommend up is that as you're going through that process, evaluate things. Figure out what's the sore in your side and make adjustments. Maybe your knife's starting to get dull. Taking a couple minutes, uh, washing that thing up, sharpening it, and then getting back to it, you end up with cleaner cuts, less effort, less risk of cutting yourself. Uh, it makes a big difference. We do most of our processing all outside. We usually set up sawhorses and then lay boards across them do all the dirty work out there, and then we take them inside, sit at the kitchen table where you can be comfortable. Maybe we'll turn on the TV or the radio or something, uh, just to kind of keep our mind off it. 
Well, we did our first batch of 12, and me and my wife were sitting there talking, and we're like, you know, boy, our, our backs were really hurting. So when we came back out to do the next batch of 14, we made sure we just took a couple extra minutes, adjusted those sawhorses to it at a much more reasonable height, and uh, we totally forgot about it. Like, it, the, the problem went away, and we didn't even realize it until today. We are sitting and chatting about it a little bit, and on, on some of that improvements. You know, sometimes it feels like it's slowing you down, but in reality, it, it gives you more stamina, it makes the, the process more, I guess, enjoyable, as enjoyable as this process can get. So, anyways, I thought I would just kind of share this stuff with you guys since it's fresh and fresh on my mind, and I believe Alex also asked about it in an email just the other day, so it worked out perfect here. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.